coming to you today with a tutorial using supplies that I got from bbcraft.com. Now this is a mixture of supplies that they sent to me to review for you as well as a bunch of supplies that I bought from them. These are beautiful beads and different components such as this lovely dragonfly pendant here that this is just super beautiful. I love all the sparkle on it. So I wanted to do the dragonfly pendant because this is just something that immediately caught my eye when I was just perusing the bbcraft.com website. Now if you're not familiar with bbcraft.com, I have several videos on previous beading hauls as well as jewelry making tutorials. If you're interested in that, I have the playlist, so check that out. But essentially what they are is a company that has multitudes of beading supplies to make your jewelry designs. And they have a plethora of brands, such as Panda Holly Elite, They've also got Sunny Clue, Honey Handy. As far as jewelry making supplies, now they also do have crafting supplies on bbcraft.com, so it's not just limited to beads. That's all I seem to care about. But if you are interested in the supplies, but you're also a YouTuber and you're interested in possibly doing reviews, for BB Craft, you can check out the YouTube Partner Program link. I will have that below. That is my affiliate link to them for the YouTube Partner Program that they have. If you have 100 or more subscribers and you make regular content, they may approve you to do like what I'm doing and receive some product in return for some reviews and tutorials and things like that on your YouTube channel. Now the bracelet that you see laid out here on my board, I'm, I'm actually going to do that on another tutorial because I am still thinking on my little magnetic multi-strand clasps here and I don't know. I don't think I'm going to do a single bracelet here. I'm going to do like a multi-strand and I'll make that a separate tutorial. But today we're going to do a necklace. I've got two different colors of bead stringing wire and see how well those colors go with the beadwork that I have here. I mean, it's just really pretty. I love both colors, but I do think that I like this color more. And I believe that the, although they don't have the name on this one, I think this is their aqua color. And this is just a really fun way to kind of continue your color elements through your jewelry designs. But I don't know. You let me know below in the, the comments. Would you rather use the blue topaz or the aqua blue color here? It's kind of a greeny blue. I'm, I think I'm going to go ahead with the aqua blue. In order to complete this necklace, I'm going to need a large split ring. And I like to use split rings as opposed to jump rings because it's got that key ring kind of scenario with the double loop. And it's different from a standard jump ring where it's just one circle with a slit in the middle. And I feel like that to end a design is a little less secure than having a split ring, like a key ring type deal. So I will also need to have a lobster claw clasp in addition to that large split ring over there. And I always like to pre-test mine just to be sure that it is going to work before I put it on because I do actually string mine directly onto the bead stringing wire. Now in your placement on the board, I have everything laid out on my board so that I already know how my pattern is going to look whenever I get it on the string. I'm going to put the lobster claw clasp on the left side of my board and the split ring on the right side of my board. This is as if I'm looking at it on another person. But whenever I go to wear it and I pick this up off of my board, this lobster claw clasp is going to wind up being in the right hand because I'm right-handed. That works out beautifully for me. If you are left-handed, you're going to put your lobster claw clasp over here on the right side of your board because it's just opposite of how you pick it up, turn around, and put it onto yourself. So just think of that whenever you're dealing with lobster claws. It doesn't really make that much of a difference when you're operating uh, like a toggle clasp or magnetic clasp, but something else to consider too, it wouldn't make a difference on the lobster claw clasp either, but I do have a pendant that's going to be a front facing. So if I did not have the pendant to worry about and it was just the necklace, the necklace is going to look the same front or back. I am going to need this to be front facing because of my pendant, so I'm going to be mindful of that as I put this together order to string all the beads on, I need to figure out how much wire I want. So I made this a 20 inch necklace and this starts at a zero here in the center and goes up in inches on this outer indention of my tray. And I go up to the 10 on both sides. So 10 times two is 20 inches in total. And then it's like a half inch for the lobster claw clasp and the split ring. So if you want it exactly to be 20 inches, you're gonna have to adjust this in your beadwork so that your clasp and your split ring are a little bit further down. I'm cool with it being 21 inches. Just keep in mind that whatever you do on one side of the board uh, as per your measurements is then doubled. So if you want an 18 inch necklace, you're gonna be here at the nine. That includes your clasp. 
if you're going to want anything like a 16 inch, you're gonna be at the A and so on and so forth. So keep that in mind when you're working with a beading tray. Now something else that affects the sizing in your necklaces and getting it strung is not only your bead tension with the size of your beads, if you have a lot of large like gumball size beads like these here, if you have a bunch of those, the bead tension is gonna be kind of tight. It's gonna take up more of the force on your bead stringing wire. If you have more petite beads, it's gonna take up less. I have an entire video about that. If you're interested, I will be sure to link that. And it just means that if it's not got a whole lot of fluidity and movement in there, or if it's just taking up a lot of that bead stringing wire, you're gonna need more of it in order to follow the design to suit. I always like to give myself a couple of inches extra on either side because of the crimping that I'm gonna have to do for my clasp. So I give myself four inches extra. So if I've got a 21 inch necklace, four inches on top of that is gonna be 25 inches of wire. And I'm just going to measure that out with a ruler or in my case, I have this handy dandy mat here on my table of my dream box. I like to go ahead and crimp one side of either my lobster claw or my split ring. And then that way it stops the beads. I can go ahead and just feed on all the beads and be good to go to finish out my necklace. Yes, I love that aqua uh, bead string wire. Now, I mean, do I have any kind of braiding or anything where there are a lot of this color wire is going to be stuck out? No, I'm not, but I still like to just have that, especially if you have like these types of beads here, these little mermaid beads, and you might see some of that colorful string in there. It's kind of cool, especially if you have like white or crystals or something. Unless you have it exposed in any part of your design or you're weaving that together or you have a tassel that you're gonna make with it, it's not gonna be a huge deal. If you just have your regular wire, that's fine too. Because I want this to be front facing, I am going to use a split ring that's a little bit smaller than this right here ending my design so that I can have that between the beads. And then I'm gonna use the smaller jump rings, which is that single circle of metal, and that has that split in there in the middle. I'm going to attach that to the split ring that I've got here. That way, I've got a little bit more movement for my pendant in order to keep it front facing without the beads rubbing, creating too much tightness in the pendant area or having it too loose or not having enough space in order to have the pendant to lay the way that I want it. So that's something else to kind of keep in, in mind. How are you gonna put your pendant onto your necklace, your bead stringing wire? You want to incorporate your beadwork, not encumber anything. In other words, I wouldn't wanna put this big, huge gumball bead right here in the center because that's gonna throw off my pendant being centered. Whereas right here, I'm centered because I got these two small beads. That little split ring is in between them and then the pattern starts from that point on outward on both sides and it's nice and symmetrical. I now have 25 inches of bead stringing wire and the very first thing I'm gonna do is grab a crimp tube, put that onto one end and I'm gonna come down about an inch and a half on there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and grab my lobster claw clasp, which I did test to be sure that it works. And I, if you haven't done that, make sure you do that because I'm putting this directly onto my bead stringing wire and it's not something that I'm gonna be able to take off. Now, if you're not comfortable doing that, you can always use a split ring or a jump ring in order to attach that to your clasp and then put that onto the bead stringing wire. But I think it's more secure doing it this way. So I'm gonna pinch this a little bit just so that I can get that wire through the crimp tube and the reason why I like crimp tubes as opposed to crimp beads is because it's more lengthy and it holds the wire more securely in those two channels when I crimp it. I just like that better than the crimp bead that is smaller and it doesn't hold as much wire. So I'm just holding the two wires here together with my thumbnail and I don't want the wires to cross over like a like an awareness ribbon or whatnot. I'm gonna get my crimping tool. I'm gonna put this in the back channel of that crimping plier and then give that a squeeze. That creates a U shape. And then I'm gonna come over on the top. I'm gonna to be in the front of my pliers at that point. Give that another squeeze. That has then closed the sandwich. You see my wires are side by side. They did not get crossed over because I held on to it with my little thumbnail there. And then if you're still feeling like you might need a little bit more security, just go ahead with your bent nose pliers and give that another squeeze so it's nice and tight. You don't want to over crimp this to where it breaks. Now, something I like to do to make it a little bit more professional looking and finishing is use the crimp cover. Now, if you have a crimp cover that might be a little bit small for your 
crimp tube, a little trick I like to do, take your round nose pliers and go into the crimp cover and just push down. It just opens that up a little bit wider so that you're not struggling with it. I might want to go up in size on your crimp cover. If you have a lot of wires that you're wanting to crimp or, you know, you've got a really thick wire or something, whatever you're doing, it kind of lends itself to the size of crimp tube that you need and the crimp cover. So I'm just taking my bent nose pliers and giving this a squeeze. I'm just lightly squeezing this. I'm not trying to flatten this in any way. And if it pooches up like a little egg, I just go on the top and kind of push it back down. But this looks like a little round bead if you do this correctly. Now I'm gonna leave this tail on here because I'm gonna cover that up with my beadwork. If you have any really tiny beads on the end of your beadwork, you might want to just be sure that it's gonna be big enough hold to go over these two pieces of wire instead of the single wire. It just gives a little bit more security, I feel, on the ends of my pieces. The smaller count of the wire strands that you have, such as a seven strand or a 19 strand or a 21 strand versus this 49 strands of wire, that means that you're going down in flexibility. That's fewer strands of wire that are banding together in order to give you some security in this piece. When I'm working with covering up that tail, I wanna be sure that the beads that are gonna be on the end of the design have a hole that is big enough to take this wire being doubled up here on the end, and that does, so we're good. Now, if I was gonna use like a really tiny seed bead or something, maybe it's not got as large of a, a center hole, then I might have a problem going over the wire when I'm trying to do the doubling of my tail. These beads are going right over it with no problem, so that is something that you just wanna kind of keep an eye on as you're planning out your design. So I'm just going to go ahead and feed all of these beads on, and then when we get to the pendant, I'm gonna put that together with my split ring and jump rings, and then continue on with my beading pattern so that we can crimp the other side and have a completed necklace. Okay, so I have this side all strung up and now I'm here at the center. I'm going to have this split ring taking most of the weight of my pendant here and I just need to have like a little jump ring that's going to grab hold of the dragonfly itself. I've opened one of those small jump rings. I'm going to grab hold of a second small jump ring and then I'm going to grab hold of this split ring here and then I'm going to close by just taking my right hand and pushing that away from myself so that I don't have any gap. You don't want to do this direction. You wanna just go front to back to make sure that you don't break the metal or cause any weakness and I don't have a gap. I want to grab hold of the lower jump ring and find the break in that and grab hold of the pendant. That way, when I go to put this onto the bead wire, it's not gonna turn sideways on me. So I'm just gonna close this. But the strength is gonna be in the split ring because that's what's gonna go onto the bead wire where I've got it on my actual plier. Now the dragonfly is front facing and it's not gonna be turned sideways. I'm gonna slide this on now to my bead stringing wire. And then I can continue on to the other side of my necklace with all of the other beads. My necklace is all situated here. I've got all the beadwork on and then I just want to double check to be sure that my pattern, I don't have any last minute mistakes that I didn't catch while it was on my board. I mean, you want to obviously catch it before you're at this phase, but this is your last chance to figure out, oh boy, maybe I skipped a bead cap or a spacer or, you know, whatever it is. Make sure that all of the gap is out of your beads so that you don't have any loosey-goosey spots. And then you're ready to go ahead once you've figured out that you don't have any problems and crimp the other side. So I'm going to take my crimp tube, drop it down. Since I don't need all of this wire here, I'm going to go ahead and cut a little bit off because I'm going to have the tail that I'm gonna have to pull through some of these beads and I don't need it to be this long. So I'm gonna go ahead and just cut off that much there, but it's better to have too much wire than not enough. So I've got the crimp tube, but now I need to grab hold of the thing that my clasp on this side over here is gonna grab hold of, which for me is gonna be the split ring. I am fine with putting it right on the wire. I've never had any problems with any kind of rubbing, friction or any of that stuff. And like I said before, this to me is a little bit more secure. So I'm gonna take my wire and come down through the center of my crimp tube. And I don't wanna cross 
my wires here. So that's why I kind of give it a little pinch. And you can see it was starting to cross right there, but if I have it pinched and then I move up the crimp tube closer to my split ring, I have the loop in a little bit more control and then I can actually just double check that I don't have my wire crossing. I'm gonna go ahead and just feed that wire down into a couple of beads since I've got the space. I'm gonna push this up. I'm gonna push that up. And then I am getting right here to where I can't really put another bead on there and still be able to grab hold of that little tail. So what I like to do at this point is take my bent nose pliers and I'm gonna pull it down with my right hand a little bit nudge my crimp tube back down the wire just a little bit more so that I can get closer to the rest of my beadwork now that I've fed on a couple of beads and I might have to do this a little strategically but because I did that at the start over here I'm not worried about my wire being crossed within these beads so now I'm going to grab one more bead and like I said this usually I, I can usually cover up about three to four of my beads on the end here. So this is a larger bead, and I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use these three beads in order to end off my design. So I'm gonna take my bent nose pliers. I'm going to pull down towards my beadwork. At the same time, I'm mindful of how much gap I've got up here on my loop. I don't want to have it so tight on my loop that this is gonna to be too tight up here on the split ring but I do need to pull the slack out so that I don't have any gaps in my beadwork. I'm right up against that highlight. Now this is the, another test here. I'm gonna grab hold of this split ring and just kind of lightly pull this up. I wanna be sure that I don't have any really loose spots in my beadwork, which I don't. I don't wanna do a whole lot of movement because obviously I don't wanna shake anything loose. Now when I go to cut this off here in a minute after I have crimped, this little gap is going to be closed because now the tension will not be there because this won't be stuck out of the bead and kind of off at an angle. But I do want to be sure that I don't have my loop too small because when I crimp my crimp tube up here, it's going to close this loop a little bit more and I don't want it really tight. So I think I'm going to just nudge it down just a little bit. You don't want to crimp the crimp bead. Okay, so now see how my loop is a little bit larger? So this side is a little bit easier to hang on to here. I'm going to put my crimp tube in the back channel of my crimping pliers and give it a squeeze. That's going to make a U shape. And then I'm going to come on either side of that U shape in the front of my pliers and then give that a squeeze. You want to be sure that you're holding this at the right angle. That has closed the sandwich is what I like to call it. And then I'm gonna take my bent nose pliers and just give it one more squeeze. So you can see when I've done that, the integrity of my loop is still there. I still have freedom of movement of my split ring here. It's not just standing straight up because it's too tight. So that's what I'm talking about when you don't wanna to have too much tension over time, it's gonna wear and cause problems and that might fray your line and whatnot. So now see I have this little tail and it's stuck out. So I wanna go and cut that off. I'm gonna come up here with my flush cutters and go right up against the bead it's coming out of. At the back of my flush cutters, I do not wanna cut the wire that's inside my beads though. So be mindful of how you're doing this because you don't wanna have a problem. I'm gonna go right up against that bead and then I'm hanging on to that wire just to be sure I don't cut it off and flip in my eyeball. I have just a little tiny nub right there. So I'm gonna poke that down into that highlight bead. And you see, I still don't have any kind of huge gaps or whatnot. And there is just the slightest little gap up here. But when I go to put my crimp cover on to cover up this crimp tube that I've got here, you're never gonna know it. So again, this is just a standard little crimp cover. And sometimes they can be a little tricky as far as not having enough space there in the, the middle for my crimp cover, but I don't really need to go up in size, or in other words, I don't need a larger crimp cover because it's still going to be able to close over my crimp. So I'm just gonna do this little trick with my round nose pliers, I'm gonna go in the center and just squeeze down. And all that does is just open up that center a little bit wider. And I like to have my sandwich side facing up when it's down here inside the crimp cover just because the back side of that sandwich side is rounded and it's going into a rounded crimp cover which is like a little pac-man on either side of the crimp cover just take your bent nose pliers and just give it a light squeeze if it starts to pooch up like an egg right here then i just get on the top and just give it a light squeeze down i don't want to flatten anything so i'm just keeping it to where it looks like it's a round bead and if you have to go around 
you can do that. So you can see by me doing that, it then took up that little bitty gap that's over here. I've not got any sort of encumbrance on my little loop. It's very easy to still move. All right, so now my necklace is made. Look how pretty that is, okay? When I lift up my necklace as if I'm gonna be wearing it, my dragonfly is front facing because of how I did the split ring in between those beads with the smaller little jump rings down underneath it. It gave it a little bit more uh, movement on that pendant. Whereas if I had tried to put the pendant up on the bead string wire, this would be hanging this way and you wouldn't be able to see it. When you go to put this on, see how this is going to my right hand now? Because this would be how I put it on. The, bra the back of the dragonfly is gonna be laying on to my chest. Everybody's gonna be seeing the front of the dragonfly, which means even though my lobster claw clasp was on the left side of the board when I was beating it. Now when I go to put it on, the lobster claw is right, right where I need it to be in my right hand because that's my dominant hand and I can now close the necklace. This is my necklace using beads and a beautiful pendant from my friends at bbcraft.com. This was some Michon Jade along with some Regalite or Imperial Jasper. I think it's kind of mixed together. Some Highlight some mermaid glass beads, some metallic spacers and bead caps, and this beautiful enameled pendant with the rhinestones. I just think it looks beautiful all together. Now I'm gonna create a secondary tutorial showing you how to make a bracelet, but I'm going to, I think I'm gonna go down to maybe like a second strand or two strand of this metallic clasp here and just do that with a smaller one so that you can see a two strand bracelet utilizing one of these multi-strand clasps. What do you think guys? What do you think of my little necklace here? I think it's beautiful how everything kind of pulls together with all the blues and the aquas. Very summery vibe with that awesome dragonfly. So thank you again to bbcraft.com for the supplies that I used here in this tutorial. I will be back with a bracelet tutorial. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you've not already done so, please subscribe to my channel and share this with any of your jewelry making friends that might be interested in BB Craft supplies or their YouTube program. I would appreciate that support as well. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a sparkle day, y'all.